So we've been on the road lately. Now with this podcast with Bo Bassett, I just really loved hearing from him. This video is brought to you, sponsored by the Dopey Menio Bands. Once again, Christ was getting a little stretch. Yeah, after a 10 hour road trip, these things are the best to loosen up, man. Enjoy the podcast. <laughs> My ears are rough right now. They're they rough. They're bad. You know, obviously the pressure's there. You lose like Flo or, or whoever's there covering it. It's probably gonna blow it up. Probably not a lot of people gave me a shot, but ended up winning that Cadet World Championships. Well, I saw in the UFC Fight Pass that your name's already being mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was cool. I have a girlfriend. Oh, you do have a girlfriend? Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Goes to a different school. Yeah, it goes to a different school. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we get it. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Clash of Combat podcast. Today we are joined with our youngest guest so far. We have Bo Bassett. How's it going? It's going good. Uh, I'm really excited to be on here. Super big fan of you guys, and, and I just appreciate the opportunity. Yes. So. No, I'm so glad we can do this in person. If you guys don't know, we're about uh, like 10 hours away from where we're at right now, from our hometown. So super cool we can fit this in your schedule. I'm glad this can work out. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I heard you guys were in town, and you know, I had to definitely take advantage of it. But yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> One thing we got to ask. On our way here, we, need, we needed food. We're so hungry. When was the last time you had McDonald's? McDonald's? Yes. Well, I, the thing for me, McDonald's has never been great, but the breakfast, I feel like, is the best. Okay. And so probably the last time I had it was probably the breakfast, but I'm not big on McDonald's, All to right. be honest with you. Yeah, but I, it's, you know, it's I, don't, I feel pretty bad right now. My stomach. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, that's why I never go to McDonald's. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. not looking around this room, dude, you do not look like somebody who eats McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not, not very often. Uh, you know, I try to stay strict as I can, but maybe sometimes. Yeah. So when, we, so when we, we were walking down here, you showed us your set and everything. I mean, I think the sheer amount of, um, what's the word? The price you have in metal, if you were to melt all your metals, it would be a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been a lot of years. Uh, we, we competed a lot when I was younger, and so pretty much every single weekend, Maybe even like Saturday, Sunday, we compete. So growing mm -hmm. up, it was always about getting matches and uh, just getting out there. And I think that, you know, if I was to go back in, my, in time, there's nothing, you know, I wouldn't change anything about it. And, and I think, uh, you know, when you're young, I think you should compete as much as you can. And, and uh, that's, that's where that all came from, though. A lot of, sure. a lot of tournaments and, and a lot of miles. So. Yeah. No, that, that is kind of an interesting take that I've been hearing a lot recently is that parents are saying, like, when should I put my kid into wrestling, especially in competition? But you would say put the kid in wrestling, yeah. especially competition. Yeah, I, I would say get right into it. Wrestle freestyle and Greco as early as you mm. can, especially in today's game. I mean, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more important. And I feel like, you know, within the next couple of years, maybe even the next year or so, I feel like there could definitely be talks of college wrestling maybe going to freestyle. So I think that it's definitely going to be really important. And uh, I just I really encourage wrestling as early as you can and compete as much as you can. Mm. How old were you when you wrestled in your first tournament? So I started at six, um, and so I'm 16 now, turning 17 this summer, and uh, so it's been 10 years. I've been wrestling for 10 years, which is crazy. It flew, but six years old and probably competed uh, first time, probably around six and a half, seven years old. So. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That, that's one thing um, is we – when you know we're talking about like who should we have on the podcast, we're like, new Bo Bassett, he's kill Bo Bassett, he's killing it, and then we're like, wait, how old is he? Like, <laughs> yeah. it was like almost a mystery, like yeah. we didn't yeah. know. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, during the COVID year, I reclassified, got held back, and so I am 16 years old, freshman in high school, and uh, yeah, I'll be turning 17 August 25th. So okay, yeah. so freshman going summer. to sophomore, sophomore year right. is next year. When's right. your birthday? So August 25th. Oh, August 25th. Yeah, yeah. So later so summer you're really birthday. Old. You're gonna be yeah, really so I'm old. really old for my grade, um, but I feel like nowadays it's more common because of COVID. Um, I know back in the day, guys used to graduate at like 18 or, or mm -hmm. even younger, and so yeah, I'm definitely pretty old. But I think uh, you know I think it was a good decision, and um, it's paid off so far. And and I think uh, you know I'll be ready when I go to college for sure in four years. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I, I got to touch base on is um, it's called Junior States, correct? Kind of that's the youth level of yeah. So junior high, we have like basically it's called PJWs in Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah. so so if I'm correct, you won eight state titles. Yeah, yeah. So so, so how um, do you think if if uh, if a kid out there wants to do that same thing, they they want to go like undefeated, they want to win out. What advice do you have for those you know youth wrestlers? Well, I think uh, one thing really that set me apart, and it's just PA wrestling really is is being good on top. And that's what we really emphasize really from a young age. I think when I was like seven years old, I learned the, my, my first tilt. And uh, I learned it from really AJ Shop back in the day uh, okay. when he was at Edinburgh and, and uh, doing all of his tilts and things. And, and that's when I really got good on top. And I think that from there on, really, guys couldn't really ever stop the tilt. And uh, <laughs> that was just something that really set me apart when I was younger. You know, guys would maybe take me down, but as soon as I got on top, I knew I could always get that turn. And so I think that, uh, 
you know, I think top really set me apart in um especially mm -hmm. in, in our state and then it only it only became more dominant in the country just cuz I feel like in Pennsylvania guys, you know, they really emphasize doing top and bottom and mm -hmm. you know, maybe outside of Pennsylvania not as much and so it really really helped me and I mean even this this folk style season Super 32 finals, I, I hit a tilt. Ironman finals, I hit a tilt. Uh, journeyman finals, I hit a tilt. Pretty much every big tournament that I wrestled in, you know, I was I was able to tilt every single guy I wrestled, and I think that that's something that really set me apart at a young age, especially. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I know for me, especially even now, like if I get a tilt, it's like a yeah. once in a blue moon. Um, so you'd say you're more like techni technically sound more than strength. Um, yeah, I would say I would say technically sound um, as far as on top. Mm -hmm. I think uh, strength is a big part of my wrestling, though. Okay. But I think the biggest aspect that that really I've only added in the last couple of years is my pace. Okay. Is something that I've really Machine added. Machine gun mindset. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The catchphrase. I mean, I, that's really the what I go by. And I, I mean, every single match that literally is going through my mind because you know the more shots I can take, you know, the better chance I have. And and uh, I think that wrestling these longer matches is definitely going to help me as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I pretty much believe I almost wrestled my last four minute match um, at the cadet level and now I'm going to junior. So it's, it's two, three minute periods, which mm -hmm. the longer the match, I think the, the more it benefits me. Yeah. Wear them down, put yeah. on the pace. That's right. There you go. Get them late. Um, I kind of want to talk about this area we're at. So this is in your basement. Yeah. So how, how big is this mat? Um, it's, it's not a full size mat, but it's definitely not small. I think mm -hmm. it's probably about three fourths of full size mat. And then uh, basically we, we have our sauna over here. We got a bunch of gym equipment, mm -hmm. um, our Bulgarian bags. I mean, we got, we got everything in, down here. Uh, and, um, you know, I just feel like I'm really, really lucky to be where I'm at. Uh, here in Western Pennsylvania, we are about 10 minutes down the road from Young Guns, the compound, everything like that. Um, UPJ is right down there, which is mm -hmm. a really high-level uh, D2 wrestling school. And so I'm in a really good spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I also get to do is go up and train at, at Penn State. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio State's only four hours. Cornell's only four hours. So I'm in a really good spot where I can train. Uh, you know, pretty much have a lot of really good opportunities that no one else really in the country has. And so I'm pretty fortunate for that. But this is my basement. This is really where the 5 a.m.s go down. Mm, and, yes, uh, every morning. You know, yeah, that's dude, right. Dude, I open those and I'm like, holy cow, it's day after day after day. Yeah. Like, yeah, we put them together. I mean, it was hard at first to get up that early. Definitely when did like, you start making that change? Like, what what did you think was like? Okay, I need to wake up early. I need yeah. to wake up at this time. So it really, for me, it started in like seventh grade, which I was the only one getting up. And there was a one twenty five pounder from UPJ. His name is Brendan Howard, and uh, he's a two time All American. He he was a little bit bigger than me then, but he was a perfect feel. He was he was a really good guy. He was really invested to come wrestle me at five a.m. And so I did that for the whole first year, and we would wrestle twice a week or so, mm -hmm. and. Um, in the week of nationals, he wrestled every morning, and, and he ended up All-American, which was really cool and, and really cool for me to see. But he, uh, he was always a big role model for me, and, and just seeing him come down and wrestle me just really, I don't know, I had to keep the tradition alive. And so, uh, you know, my brothers, my dad started coming down the next couple of years, and then this, the last two years, really, we've had uh, pretty much my whole team is, is coming down in the 5 a.m.s. And so wow. 450 rolls how many kids? Are, how many kids? So uh, at the beginning of the season, we have like 20s. 22, okay. 24, and uh, now towards the end of the season, guys are, you know. The deep just, waters. They're starting to slag off. Uh, the deep wait, waters. They're coming here? They're coming here. At 5 a.m. 5 so, a.m. So they, they could be waking up earlier than you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're waking up probably 4.15, 4.30. So, I mean, they're, they're waking up oh, earlier dude. than me. I wake up Holy cow. literally 4.48-ish. Sometimes, you know, I'll snooze once. So 4.48, and I just pretty <laughs> much roll out, come down, get my shoes on. and So this is just like you're pretty much transforming, like, your culture. Like you're yeah. really building it and it's, it's yeah. more than yourself. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's super motivating when you come down and you got the whole team there mm -hmm. ready to work out with you. And, and I think, uh, one thing that I really think is really cool is that I post them. And I think that yeah. I'm just trying to inspire guys to, you know, just chase their dreams and work really hard. And if, uh, if I can change someone's life by doing that, then it's all worth it. But I, I try to post them every time and I feel like it's definitely trying to inspire others, but also put that fear into some of my opponents who are sleeping in. I was going to ask. You know I was I mean? going to ask yeah, if that's you know, a mind trick. You wake up and you see, oh, he was up at 5 a.m. Like, he was out working me. I, I think it definitely plays a tool in your mind. Mm. And I know it wouldn't mind if I was sleeping in and my opponents were working out at, yeah. you know, when I was sleeping. So. And it's like it, keep, it keeps you accountable posting yep. it on social media. It does. Because yeah. people yeah. notice when you, like, stop posting yeah. it. Yep. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so, like, if there's, like, maybe a really big competition and I don't post for a week because we don't yeah. do the 5 a.m.s maybe after that or whatever – Guys will like DM me and ask me, 
why I didn't post or, or if I forgot mm. to post and I'm like, you know, so it definitely keeps you accountable and, and, uh, yeah, I definitely want to keep putting it out there to inspire others. And, and like I said, it definitely puts the fear into some yeah. of the opponents. So, um, touch, I'm just going to touch base on earlier, how you said, you know, you were, you could practice with the guys at the Ohio RTC and then the, you know, Penn state RTC, yeah. who are some guys that you're rolling with? Yeah. So, well, starting off with Penn state, arguably the best room in the world. It is. I mean, it. you can't deny it. Um, especially around my weight. So, like, I've wrestled with Gilman. I've wrestled with Roman. Uh, Roman Bravo Young. I've wrestled with a lot of the coaches because they're smaller. And uh, right now, you know, I'm almost pretty much as big as them with Cody, Coach Sanderson, and Coach Kennedy. And so I get to wrestle with them, and that's always a good feel. And then back um, a couple years ago, Jordan Conway was their starting 125, and so he's in the room okay. still wrestling. And so I'll wrestle with him. And then, I mean, they got guys coming in and out of there all the time. Mm. And uh, now I know Nagao is going to be in there. And uh, sometimes Nico Megalutis will come back and stuff. And so there's always a lot of really good partners in there. And uh, a lot of good guys who are in the RTC as well that are past college. Yeah. So. Do you think it's uh, there's any chance you don't go to Penn State? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, a lot of people have, like, written me in maybe for Penn State. And I'm like, I understand that I train there and stuff. But I'm the type of guy – I know now that it's unlimited visit it, visits for college, so I'm going to be one of those guys that's oh, going to take my visits. Okay. And, I did not uh, know that. I mean, I want to I make the right decision. You know, yeah. like, just only get this once, so I don't want to, you know, mess it up, and I'm going to definitely take all my visits. That's sweet. So, excited Jeez. for that, excited for that, you know, process. Chapter? But, for, I mean, you got a couple more years. Yeah, yeah, I mean. What, what do you have yet to accomplish here in high school? Yeah, well, I had a really good year this year. Really good year. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough to top. I know that. I won, so starting off, I won Super 32, and then Elite Eight duels is really, really tough, and I went undefeated there. I, I won Journeyman, Ironman, Powerade, and so it was a really good year, and I was wrestling a lot of guys that were older, wrestling at 113 and 120, so I was starting to get into those man weights, I guess you could say, for high school, mm. and a lot of guys that were committed to colleges, and so that was definitely really cool, but I know that uh, I'll probably definitely be getting bigger, and so I think the competition's going to get older, um, stronger, and mm. so I think it's going to be fun to, to go after that, but... I think I just want to repeat and winning all those things that I have won. And, and obviously, my main goal is the world titles on the freestyle side of things. And so that's, that's the main goal is wrestling overseas and, and getting that type of stuff done. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that kind of reminds me of when we had Gable on. And, you know, he's saying, like, yeah, you won the Olympics. You won these things. But can you do it again? Yeah. Like, that kind of wakes you. That keeps you up at night. It's like, like who's training? What, what can I still yeah. do? Well, one thing that – is a weird take by me, but I honestly think it's the truth is, I, you know, it's really hard to get on top and, and win something big, but I think it's harder to stay there mm. and, and constantly, consistently win at that highest level and, and be able to, you know, repeat. And I think it's really tough. And, and uh, if Gable can get that done, I, you know, he's, he's proven himself as one of the greatest ever. And uh, I see where he's coming from, though, with, with repeating. I know it's definitely really hard. And you have that target on your back, which makes sure. things makes things tough. But. Do, you, do you think it's harder because – they get comfortable? Um, I would just say that having that target on your back, everyone's like, they're kind of waking up, seeing you in their mirror. Okay. You know, they're thinking about you and they're training for you and they're going to start, you know, I think just game planning and things start to get tough. So I think that you got to constantly evolve, constantly get better. Yeah. And, you know, I think just put yourself out there as much as you can. So correct me if I'm wrong, but with Super 32, there was a year where you lost. Yep. But within that year, you won the Cadet World Championship. And then you got revenge on the guy that you lost the year before at the next Super 32. Yeah, so I took a loss to uh, Knox from Jersey. I was in eighth grade. I bumped up. had nothing to lose, really. I feel like that's when I wrestled my best. So I was just going in there. I mean, really, I didn't know what I could do. I hadn't wrestled a lot of the guys. A lot of them were older. I was just kind of going in there and, and doing whatever I could. I knew that, you know, probably not a lot of people gave me a shot, but uh, made the finals, wrestled a lot of really tough guys, a lot of older guys that I never wrestled before. And then obviously took that loss, and that one, that one hurt for a while. And, uh, yeah, it definitely motivated me, propelled me. I had a really good year. Ended up winning that Cadet World Championships. And uh, I think that, you know, getting that revenge batch back was just – it was just too good. Uh, you know, I thought about it a lot, and I knew that he'd be back at Super 32, and, you know, he's always wrestling in that event, so I knew he'd be there. And when I heard he was going 13, I knew I had to, I had to go 13 and, and try to get that match back in them. It just so happened we were the one and two seed and, and met in the finals, and I got it back. But that was definitely one of the turning points in my career that I think really, really set me, you know, I think just set me up for a lot of success and really motivated me. So that was definitely good to get that one back, and I'm sure we'll wrestle again and, 
have a lot more battles. So what so. felt better, getting the revenge or winning the, the world title? Uh, world title. There's nothing like <laughs> yeah. that. There's nothing like that. Uh, running that flag and, and, I don't know, just going overseas. I mean, I was over there for, I think, 12 days, 11 days maybe, because I wrestled in freestyle and Greco. Oh. Um, so I made both teams. Uh, I didn't do as well in Greco. Uh, I, lost, I wrestled Russia first round, and uh, he, he was tough. And um, ended up then placing in Greco, but then freestyle, I knew that was my game, and I knew that was what I was there for. And uh, the coaches, we had a great coaching staff. We had Coach Pritz, Coach Reeder. Obviously, um, Coach Jackson was the head coach, and, mm. and they're just awesome. You know, they're, they're, that, that staff was crazy awesome, and I was just really fortunate to be a part of that team. And, and uh, Levi Haynes was on that team. A lot of oh, guys wow. that are, like, tearing sure. it up now on the, on the college scene, and, and uh, it's just pretty cool to be a part of that. And, Obviously, getting it done was the best part. So. Yeah. I, I swear, this is like four podcasts yeah. in a row where John Reader's name has been yes. mentioned. Yes. We're, yeah. We need to get him on. We say that every time. He brings the energy. He He's does. awesome. Yeah. He's a good dude. And uh, he was training for the 100 mile race that yes. him and Bono did yeah. when he was at Worlds. And so oh. if I was like running maybe to lose weight or, or uh, just really doing practices just the days leading up, they had us there seven days early to acclimate. He was doing everything with us, obviously, because he was trying to be in really sure. good shape, and uh, that dude brings the energy. He was always playing his music or, or just being really loud, getting everyone fired up, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that guy brings it, and his positive energy is really contagious. That's sweet. Do you like blast music in here? What's like the vibes? Uh, sometimes. So my dad normally runs the music at the 5 a.m.s, uh, and it's it's really anything, anything okay. from rap, country, to back Ice to spice. the 80s, 90s. I mean, <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really anything, and you never know what you're going to get. But sometimes we'll blast it in here. I know when I'm just down here wrestling a college guy or whatever, we, we blast the music. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I know that's a common theme. One thing that they do at Penn State in some of the college rooms uh -huh. that I've been to, which is so weird, is they'll play one song on repeat the what? whole entire practice. No. What? Yeah. Yeah, one song the whole time. I mean, really, sometimes it's some weird stuff or – or it's like something that's that's popular, but again, it it gets old after three times, and then it just keeps <laughs> yeah, going. The whole what? practice stuck in your head. But I don't. I'm not really sure what the reason is, but uh, I mean, there's a good chance tomorrow it'll be one song at Disney Lion. What? Is there? So. Do you remember one of the songs? Oh yeah, I mean, there's just uh, they do um, some Spanish music sometimes, like Despacito, um, Pepa, stuff like that, uh, weird stuff like that, and then they'll do like Heat Waves and some of the rap stuff. And then mm. back, back some of the stuff. I mean, I th I'm pretty sure whoever is there first gets to pick the song. Oh, okay. Yep. That and makes so, sense. But yeah. the same song for an same hour, song. what is it, hour and a half practice? Yeah. So Storaki's Run Out is the, uh, the Halloween theme. And one <laughs> time it was that for the whole practice. Oh, oh wow. My gosh. So yeah. we actually met him today and Crosby was fanboying a little bit. Yeah, it was he's, a little he's, bit. He's, <laughs> he's, he's awesome. He, uh, he's a character for sure on social media. Sometimes he posts some really funny stuff or controversial or whatever but <laughs> that's how he is he's really sure. he's a really funny guy and uh he's always taking the time with me and so i got nothing but respect for him and and uh yeah he's super cool dude that's sweet how yeah. do you think his ufc career will play out I, I if he does it i think there's no reason that he can't take over just like bo is now bo nichols crushing it and i think that a few guys in there are rumored to go to the fighting scene and i've seen you know a couple guys in there i won't mention names but it seemed like they're like preparing mm. to do that UFC, like they're over to do like shadow boxing or doing jujitsu over in the corner or whatever. And and uh, it's cool to see that guys are transitioning to doing stuff like that. So well, I saw in the UFC fight pass that your name's already being mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was cool. The the guys reached out to me. The account on Instagram has over a million followers, yep. and they DM me. And you know how sometimes accounts get hacked, and <laughs> I didn't think it was real. And they they said something like shoot me your number or uh, you know I want to get in contact with you, and I. Honestly, didn't think it was real, but I responded. This was last just, year. This or? was a couple months ago. Okay, oh, a couple months. And ago. Uh, they just they you know wanted to get in contact, and I sent my number, hoping that it wasn't a scam, and it wasn't. It ended up being like one of their guys, sure. and uh, yeah, he interviewed me, asked me about UFC and stuff, and and I was like, why not? You know, maybe someday. And and uh, we talked a lot about the Penn State guys that are transitioning, and um, and so like they'll like interview me for like articles and stuff. Sure. And, like, yeah, yeah. It's cool because like my name's there, and it's like. Bo Nickel, and it's like Roman Bravo Young, and it's like just these crazy names like Gable, and sure. you know I've seen a lot of them in there. So. Yeah, I think both your names are in there for yeah, the, we're at the, the Henry Cejudo. Cejudo. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that we one were in that one too. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that one thing I gotta mention. That was everyone so cool. said Cejudo. Like, I mean, like pretty much everyone did say Cejudo, correct? Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, I don't know did you I see the it. fights? Did you watch the fights? Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Like, I mean, 
Aljo just he took it to him. He was the I man. Know. Yeah, he's big. He's a big. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like one thirty-five. Yeah, which is crazy to me because that's not too far off, and and those dudes are big for sure. Mm. And uh, obviously, it's one time weigh in like forty-eight hours or something almost before the fight. I think it's like thirty-six, and really? so like they could probably cut. I know Aljo was weighing. I think he weighed sixty-five. Yeah, like Wait, week there's, after. There's, there's pictures of him at fighted? seventy. 70. Yeah. At the 70. moment they fought? No, no, no. no. Oh, like, just like a little bit after. after. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, he said he eats whatever he wants yeah. for that week or whatever. I mean, I don't blame him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he got it done. It was cool to see that fight, though. Cejudo come back. He's been off, like, three years or whatever. Yeah. And he said he's not done, though. I saw today that he is fighting again, and I'm sure he'll be back. He's a crazy good athlete. Yeah. Mm. He's fighting, but, uh, or he's, he wants to fight yeah, uh, Sterling's yeah. training partner, Marab. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. I saw, that. I saw that. Oh, wow. Yeah, he wants to be in, like, the... Basically, like, the co-main event before Sterling's fight against um, O'Malley. Okay. Yeah. Dude, I want to go to, like, those in, in person so bad. Yeah. I feel like that environment. Yeah. See, that's, like, what wrestling needs. Like, that hype. Yeah. But, like, how do we get it to We got to get that? Bruce Buffer in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as yeah. the fights. It stinks, though, because some of the UFC fights are overseas. It's tough mm. to get to those. I don't know sure. how you'd be able to do that. But I know some are in, like, Miami, um, Madison Square Garden. So I'm sure it's possible. Yeah. So is that – I don't know if we covered it, but, like, would you plan after wrestling go into it? I think I think uh, it's definitely on the – I mean, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. I mean – Can't count it out. Can't count right. it out, no. Uh, especially seeing what these guys are doing. They're going in there dominating. And so I think uh, – I'm sure the UFC is going to be even bigger than it is now by then. And I think if uh, if my body's still <laughs> still able to go, I think definitely could see that, you know, mm-hmm. on the horizon for sure. Well, I saw you laid out, like, your whole timeline. Like, yeah. it was, like, a decade in the future, like, 2032 Olympic cycle. Yeah, so so basically I signed with Brutus about two, three months ago, and they gave me basically a timeline. And uh, Wow. They uh, pretty much put out, and they wanted to hear my goals, and, and it really challenged me mentally. Like, I had to really think then, and I was like, you know, I really want to do this for a long time, and I see myself wrestling past 32 Olympics, mm-hmm. maybe 36, like, it's it's definitely you know in the possibility, and I know that JB is wrestling really old. So if you know knock on wood, I can you know, keep going that long. I think there's no reason that I won't. Yeah, I did want to talk to you more about like how that opportunity came up for you because yeah. you are like by far the youngest. Like it was like yeah. when I saw that, I was like, holy cow! Yeah. Like how was that process for you? So basically, I had always went to Jeff Jordan wrestling camps, okay. which he was a big rudist. I'm pretty sure he's more one third of the owner. Or yeah, something like that. And so he's really big in Rudis. And uh, I always knew of Rudis. And I was always, you know, I always wore Rudis, big supporter and stuff. And so they just saw that I had a really good following. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically they reached out and said, you know, they want to basically make history and uh, mm. make that deal go down. And that's a no-brainer. There's no <laughs> way I was turning that down. The biggest, I mean, really the biggest clothing company in wrestling. And uh, soon to do some big things, um, which, which are on their plans. And it's just crazy that... I had to be a part of that, and with some of the guys that are on that, yeah. I mean, Snyder and, and, and some of these guys are just huge role models, and so it's cool to, to be a part of that team, and, and uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to be, you know, with them. Team Rudis is awesome. Now, I, I can go with this in a couple ways, but I'm just going to go on this way, on this path, path first, is do you think that you would be the first high school wrestler with their own Rudis shoe, own wrestling shoe? So, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but <laughs> I know that I'm not allowed a shoe, until I believe I win an Olympic title. Oh, what? I believe I win an Olympic title or maybe senior See, world title. I believe, though, that I won't be doing any of that, you know, sure. until yeah, later, yeah, yeah. until I win the big stuff. That's, like, that's Rudis's Yeah, well, that's what I heard from so like, the brands. So basically they just said that they want you to be – make sure that you're, you know. Yeah. Legit. You're big time. <laughs> that's so. what I, – I heard a, um, an interview with, like, the brands. Yeah. Like, they were saying, like, you don't get your own shoe. You don't earn it until you right. win Olympic gold. Right. Uh, but now, like, you know – there's not like everyone and their mom has their own shoe, but like there's a lot of different, yeah. whether it's any just random shoe companies. Which I think is great for the sure. sport. I think it's great. I think uh, Yanni putting out his shoes was great yeah. th- at this young. Yeah. I think that's great. A lot of guys are, you know, he has a huge following. And uh, I think for me though, I think uh, just, I'm just going to keep trying to build it. Mm. Just keep trying to build my following and hopefully one day I do accomplish that and then we can make the shoe and that would be pretty awesome. But it's cool. Like they already started like, helping me create a logo and mm. and uh, create my shoe already. And okay. I mean, we're so far off from that and, you know, God willing, I can I can get that done. But, you know, it's just cool to, to be mm. in the talks of that stuff. And uh, yeah, but none of that's happening until the big stuff. Yeah, so. 
That's sweet. Excited how, how so? How does the like the whole NIL affect you? Even though you're in high school, is that yeah. different than college? Um. So no, it's pretty much the same. Pennsylvania allowed it probably about a year ago. Today it looks like um, something like that. I'm pretty sure it was about a year ago, and and ever since then, since I really got the first NIL deal with Ice Barrel, it's just mm. skyrocketed. It skyrocketed, and uh, they've just been coming in a lot. And um, the rudest one was obviously the biggest deal. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same as college. Like, mm. you get paid, and, and uh, I mean, I know for me that I'm going to be really smart with all that. I have a Roth IRA, um, and I, I, I even, like, I had all of that done. <laughs> That's so, so crazy. Yeah, yeah, so, like. You probably had one before me. I just created one. Yeah, yeah, so I was, I mean, my dad's really big yeah. on, on doing that type of stuff, right? And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be saving all that and using it, I guess, when a time in need mm. uh, because, you know, I, I got everything I need. It's not like I should spend it on something dumb. And so I just keep it all in there and, you know, let it build up over time. Mm. So That's crazy. Yeah. Dude, wait, but he – think about it like this. Okay. You're, a, what, a freshman. Yeah. <laughs> and you have 30,000 followers on Instagram, I think, or it was yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think about, like, what you were at at that point. Freshman year, probably I didn't under, start, I didn't start making content. Yeah. I was so now here's the thing like I I think I'm popular because I you know create entertaining wrestling videos right now you as well create entertaining wrestling wrestling videos it's different but, yeah, yeah yeah but you're good at wrestling it's like, like you it's win like, world I titles like, I, feel like, <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I do the more, like the training stuff yeah, and like sure you know your stuff is more like literally sit down and watch a YouTube video for 20 minutes and sure. it's like entertaining all the sure. time I'm like more like smaller clip stuff I mm. might try to get into more of the YouTube stuff and like longer videos but I'm just not sure yet. Maybe yeah. in the summer when I, I have more I time. I'll tell you what. Like, I have YouTube, okay. but I only post like matches Once, or, or like, whatever. If you are going to do it, I would just suggest have someone else film you, have someone yeah. else edit. Like, Do not do that yourself because it takes up oh, dang I've, near half of my time. Yeah. And um, I could, going back to the NIL, do those things ever take up too much of your time? And does it ever make wrestling seem more of a job instead of like a hobby? Well, this is what I love to do. Okay. So for me, it was just like, basically like i guess just a bonus i mean mm. i was just i mean i'm just trying to reach my goals and this stuff is coming with it and it, i mean it's great it's it's i mean i'm every single time that i can do something like that i have that opportunity i'm going to take it and uh, i don't think it really takes up much of the time because i mean when i'm really handling that type of stuff is in school i mean mm. really i'll get my stuff done or, or study hall and whatever and i'm just handling all that sending emails or or whatever but i mean really all the companies that i'm with are great i mean yeah. I film videos for them or I put out their stuff on my social medias. Word mm -hmm. of mouth as well is big. And I mean, really, it's, it's not too much of a hassle. Yeah. They make it easy. And I mean, they're all really great companies. That's awesome. So you like, have you ran a camp? Oh, yeah. Yes, we did camps. My first camp was to raise money for Worlds. Because okay. Worlds, um, I don't know if you know, but cadets is not paid for. Oh. So it's, it's a lot of money. And my whole family went. And so we ran a couple camps. And um that paid for it but that was when the camp started and like now like it's crazy like i put out i'm doing camps not really knowing if i get bites but i'm going to like five different camps five different states and uh we're running camps two days one day whatever and it's gonna be fun uh, i know i have one in austin texas i know i'm going down to florida um a bunch in pennsylvania i'll do a couple for young guns uh with the littler guys and i think it's just cool that, that i can do that and, and spread the knowledge at such a young age it was cool because like Back when I started wrestling, Spencer won his first world title, and he ran a camp to raise money for his, his oh, world okay. um, tour or whatever, and that's really where that, that sparked in my mind that I want to do that someday. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you have a lot of Spencer pictures up around, yep. memorabilia, stuff yep. like that, signed pictures. Yeah. Have you looked to him as like wanting to accomplish the things he's done? Yeah, I mean, he's always been the guy for me. I wrestled in the same room as him at Young Guns, and like ever since then, he was, he was the guy. He was mm. the role model. He still is. Um, and, and Spencer's always been great with me. We've always been, you know, I don't talk to him as much anymore because he's out in Iowa, but I mean, we used to train in the room almost every weekend. Mm. Um, he lived more towards Pittsburgh. And so we would always go to strip matters basement. Okay. And, uh, that's where the real intense workouts were. It gets real hot in there. And it was normally like small group and he would wrestle like Gavin Teasdale or, or someone like that. Um, Kemmer was in the room. Nolf was in the room, guys like that. And, uh, yeah, that was always a great room. And, and having Spencer as a role model has always been big for me. I, I have to touch base on this. What were your thoughts on the, the NCAA? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's hard to stay on top. And Spencer's been doing it so long, obviously battling through injuries. I mean, a loss, you're going you're gonna to have losses. And uh, 
you know, I'm hoping that he can get healthy enough to to come back. I know freestyle is his, his strongest style, which is crazy to say when he's a Hodge Trophy winner and, and um, you know, obviously three-time national champ and does all that. So it's just crazy that, that uh, freestyle is even better. And I'm just hoping that he can get healthy, though, mm. because that's really tough sometimes is, is uh, battling injuries. But I know that, uh, you know, that loss definitely is going to feel him. Yeah. And uh, he'll be back. So That's sweet. Are you training freestyle full-time right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going all in freestyle. And then uh, Thursdays we do a little bit of top folk style. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we always try to keep uh, – keep the reps going and uh even if it's just like 20 minutes we'll get our reps in tilts uh, bars all that type of stuff and um mm. wrestle a little bit of folk style live but uh in the folk style season at the 5 a.m's we still wrestle freestyle really yep yeah we keep freestyle sharp and uh it's always you know always in your mind i yeah. guess even when you're wrestling folk style like week of super 32 or iron man like 5 a.m's we're still going freestyle when is like your next folk style competition i guess really it would be super 32 Really? Um, yeah, so I'll wrestle U20 trials for freestyle here coming up, and then uh, Fargo, and, and then it's probably Super 32. That's always – that one's huge. I mean, that the numbers there are just crazy and the amount of ranked guys. I mean, I think like 15 out of the top 20 in my weight were in it last year. And at that – I mean, at every single weight, it's loaded. And so um, that's always one that I don't want to miss. Mm. Is U20s – so you're going to be there when we're there for U23s? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so oh. it's – Same time. So it's, at, be, it's at Spire. I only wrestle, I believe, Saturday. It is maybe Friday, but it's it's one day mini tournament. And if you are the toughest dude in your weight and you make it through that, then you get the guy who won the open. Right. Which for me, it was Lilladol, who I have beaten this year. Um, I beat him in freestyle at Elite Eight. So I know that it's definitely, I definitely have a shot. I know maybe a lot of people aren't giving me much of a shot, but I know how hard I work. And and uh, these guys will be old. They'll be strong, I'm sure. But you know, I'm really excited for the opportunity and. Like I said earlier, I think I wrestle best when I got nothing to lose. And mm. in this case, I really have nothing to lose. So. I'm so excited to actually watch you wrestle. Yeah. yeah. So I remember when we were there last year and we'd be seeing, you know, the guys just walking around, maybe, yeah. you know, get warming up. And I'm like, dude, holy cow, like, is yeah. that, is that who it is? <laughs> or, like, I know this year we'd be like, yeah. Jumbo Bassett's <laughs> <He's> up. <laughs> yeah, I know for me, it's going to be cool this year with U20s and then obviously U23s. Is some of the older guys who are like in college now doing a lot of good things. And it would just be cool to be out there. Mm. It's cool too because I wrestled up a lot i was always like chasing lions is what we call it like mm. basically chasing losses chasing guys who are better than you and um and so i wrestled on a lot of like high school teams and middle school and even in sixth grade i wrestled on my first high school team and like virginia beach and different stuff and uh i wrestled with a lot of the guys that are in college now and now it's just crazy like i know like so many different guys and yeah. uh that, that are older than me and it's just cool to have those connections and so i know a lot of guys out there at the trials and and uh yeah that'll be fun for you though, you're gonna have to fight through the, like a tough bracket, oh, yeah. and then you yeah. have a best oh, of yeah. three at the end. Yeah, right? I mean, who knows? The bracket could be even tougher than the best of three. I mean, that's true. That's how deep these weights are, and uh, I know that um, I can't overlook anyone. I know it's really hard to qualify, so no, no guy in there is an easy match at all. I mean, every single match is gonna be a tough dude who who's probably won two or three state titles, and like they're they're the real deal. So. I know that it'll probably be about a bracket of like 8 to 16 probably. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who all qualified. And uh, I know that people like to register real late. Mm. Um, like basically, I think it's like two days before. Just mind games? To, I don't know what what they do it for or, or why. Or maybe they don't want guys to know if, what weight or sure. scout them or whatever. Yeah. But I think at this point, we know pretty much what weight everyone will be at. What, what weight are you going to be at? Oh, fit the lowest weight. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so wait, wait, how many pounds is that? I suck at kilos. It's 125.6 or point eight. So is Corgan in his bracket? Oh. That's what, okay. He must be. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, so I mean it's the lowest weight. If okay. there was lower, I'd go it. But um, at this point, I'm just trying yeah. to kind of like get big and then come back down okay. if I can. Do you know who Shane Corgan is? I've heard of him, but I don't like I've never met him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's our 25-pounder. He okay. took uh, seventh this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so again. You're going to have guys like that. Yeah. You place it like yeah. nationals, yeah. college level, but it'll be That's fun. exciting. It'll That's be super cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I train with the D, D1 guys every day and yeah. RBY and Gilman and stuff, so I feel like I'll be ready and I have that feel. Yeah, it's nothing new. Really. No, yeah. no. I told you, I've been wrestling up my whole life, and so I feel like, honestly, this is just like when I was in middle school wrestling you know, up in high school, so. Yeah. That's freaking awesome, dude. Are you doing Greco? I'm not. I'm doing just freestyle. Um, Greco, I feel like I may be done. I really? may be done with Greco. I made the team 
way back in 2021 Greco world team and just like really off a of hand fighting. Like I yeah. didn't know much Greco. I, I knew a couple of throws, but I mean, for me, Greco wasn't ever my thing. And then this year it just really didn't work out. And I don't think I'll be wrestling Greco anymore. I think it'll be all freestyle now. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like Greco is like, like nobody wants it needs to, to make do it. it cool. I, I know Greco. You need to make it cool. Yeah. Just post cool YouTube videos throwing yeah. guys. Well, I know Greco is high flying. Like it's fun to yeah. watch. Honestly, yeah. it's only fun to watch if it's high flying. Yes. Yeah. It's I mean, the guys who watch. just like go but out there and kind of just pumble the whole time. It's like. It's almost like it gets more boring the higher levels you go. Yes. Yeah, but I, I mean, you, you got agree. dudes like Kamal Bay that are just. Yeah. yeah something's gonna happen. Yeah. You there's know. a select few. Yeah. There's yes. a select few, where I'm like, I want to watch. Okay, but then on the world or Olympic level, like, do we ever bring home a medal? Not, no. not often. I know that when I was there, we brought home one. It was Corey Land. He got silver. Mm. And, I mean, he's a stud. He's a stud in freestyle. Oh, and he's, well. at, he's at uni right now, right? Yeah. You know, okay. yep, 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 yep. And uh, I'm sure he's going to do great things. And uh, he was on my world team for that. And he was the only medal we brought home. We had a tough team. Like, there were some really tough dudes on there and that I thought would place. And, I mean, I thought I would place. But just – these dudes from other countries, that's all they do is Greco. They're not wrestling freestyle or folk yeah. style. Like, they don't even know what that is. Folk style. Is, is, they don't even know what that is. And freestyle, they quit that way back. Like, they literally specialize in Greco, and so it's tough to compete with that. I mean, that's what our coach was saying. We had him on our podcast, and he was basically saying, like, these guys are not competing. They're not competing folk style in nine no. months and then just picking up Greco right. for a few months and yeah. winning. Yeah. Like, you have to be doing it. Right. I can't remember who were the people he listed. It was like... Thel- Thilke, yeah, he, I know he Thilke, skipped college. Thilke, I think, lives at the OTC. He's there every single time I'm there. And I've been there like three times, and he's always been there. He's a really cool dude. And Some of the guys, like, they literally live at the OTC, and they train Greco. They day. live at it? Yeah, they live there. So there's, like, like facilities. apartments oh, yeah. at or something, something yep. close? Yeah, yeah. So they have really nice apartments for people that actually yeah. live there. It's like the Olympic Village or something? Yeah, yeah. That's so, true. like, they were – there was a program that – I was close to doing was basically you spend like six months there and <laughs> you just train there the whole time, all the camps, senior camps that come in or whatever. Here's, and here's my it's question. A great for you. opportunity. I was, I wanted to bring this up earlier. I never could find the chance, but would you, do you, have you ever felt like burnt out with wrestling? I, I, I feel like I love it. Mm-hmm. And there's times where I'm like, maybe I don't want to go to practice or maybe you don't want to cut weight or whatever. But like, there's not really a time where I'm like, I'm burnt out sure. or like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's like, I love what I'm doing. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sure there's low times where I'm like, dang, this is going to stink. Mm-hmm. But I know it's for a greater thing. I know it's to reach my goals or, or uh, you know, to get something on the other side and sacrifice on the front end. But, you know, there's definitely times where you're maybe not as motivated. Yeah. But I feel like there's never a time where I felt like that. You know, I'm always, mm. this is what I do. This is what I love. And, and so there's never a time where I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, sure. This is what I want to do. Okay. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, the, stepping out of wrestling, what do you do for fun? Yeah. Well, I I always go to the gym and lift. I know that's kind of with wrestling. So I'm always in the gym. My dad owns a gym, and so I'm there a lot. And I feel like just hanging out with the guys too, like even over, over at the compound or, or wherever at school is like something I like to do. I'm, I mean, really, I don't have many other friends outside of my wrestling team mm. just because we're just different. You know, we do a lot of things different. We travel a lot together. And, and I think that one thing that that we do together, you know, I mean, we travel together. I think that's really big. And I think that just training together and everything uh, really builds that bond. And mm-hmm. so I'm really close to all my teammates. They're like brothers. And so I think that's one thing, just hanging out with my teammates. But I'm a big Steelers fan. And mm-hmm. so we go to the games sometimes. And, and I've always been big on watching football and stuff. And uh, college football, no specific team for that. But just watching college football. I was always big on football and, and the Steelers and stuff. And, and uh, one thing that we do um, some weekends when we don't have wrestling is we have a hunting camp. And so it's about two and a half hours from here. It's, it's up northern Pennsylvania. And uh, we go up there a lot, hunt, fish, whatever. It's just like get away. There's no cell service there. So it's pretty out, out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, we do things like that. So definitely stuff like that. And um, I think I just like traveling. We travel a lot, even for non-wrestling stuff. Flying or driving? Either or, really. Um, I just like just getting out there and seeing the world, I guess. I mean. One of the coolest things ever was just going overseas, down to Mexico. I wrestled at the Pan Ams and then go to Budapest was mm. just stuff like that. It's just really cool. Yeah. I mean, relaying back on hunting, we've never been in Pennsylvania. And, oh, my gosh, is it just, like, valleys are just trees yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah, mountains and valleys. Yes. A um, lot, lot of hills, mountains, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's not flat. No, it's it not is flat not. It's not flat at all. No. Uh, once you cross the Ohio border, 
it gets pretty flat in Ohio, but I mean, as soon as you come into Pennsylvania, it's yeah, like, you know, it's, you're here. It's coming up and down. Yeah. And uh, yeah, where my hunting camp is, it's, it's really, it's pretty big mountains and uh, valleys, like you said. And mm. so we got a creek up there. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, we'll, we'll take like team trips up there or whatever. Sometimes I'll just go up with, with my family and stuff, but it's definitely a place I like to go to. And, and uh, yeah, it definitely shows that Pennsylvania type, I guess, culture. Yeah. yeah. What do you hunt? So we did, there's, there's a lot of deer up there. I mean, tons yeah and then there's elk up there but i've never hunted elk or anything sometimes we'll do squirrel uh, yeah. which is not the greatest <laughs> thing but um i just do it you know to hang out with my right. dad my dad my uncle my brothers i uh, will head out there and, and um and so basically we just go up there really to get away from i guess training and and the wrestling and, and i guess really the, the phones too like having no cell service is different mm. but i actually really enjoy it i think it's good to get away from that and so uh, we do that, and then we fish a little bit, um, and then there's like crawfish up there that we'll that we'll get. They're like under the rocks. It's it's pretty cool. And then and there's tons of snakes and bear up there, and so it's there's a lot of wildlife going on up there, and it's just cool to get away and and just go up there and hang out. What do you think is your average view duration on your phone? Oh man, average screen time. Screen, screen time. time. Yeah, is that it? On mine, it's probably pretty high, but I would say. I don't know because I do a lot of business stuff too on my Chromebook. Sure. Okay. And so, I'm sure it's pretty high, but I mean, when I'm at practice, I'm at practice. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like that. So when I'm at school, I'm at school, and I'm going to practice. I'm at practice, but I feel like when I'm not there, I'm definitely on my phone, making sure that that everything's straight with with all my stuff. I I like I said, I'm really big on building that brand, and so that's really important to me as well. Um, but I would say it's probably a couple hours a day mm. just trying to stay up with that and uh so what brings it up sometimes too is playing music at practice oh, if sure. i'm like the yeah, guy yeah. that day or whatever so uh some weeks it's higher or lower but um when i'm up at camp it's zero yeah it's, it's nothing so. well at least you haven't fallen to that tiktok trap yeah That's no so dangerous I, uh, and it's i i get a lot of people who tell me i should get an account like post stuff but i just never really was into that but i feel like it could definitely help get my name mm. out there i know it's really big and, Do you have uh, it on your downloaded on your phone or no? I have an account. Okay. I don't, I don't go in there. Yeah. Really. yeah, yeah. But uh, I have it, and I was thinking about starting posting stuff, but I'm just not, I'm not mm. really there yet. Okay. So we'll see. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, for me, I just literally post this sometimes the same, literally just recycle the yeah. content because yeah. people are gonna be on there. But. So that that's normally what I do, like Twitter and, and Facebook okay. and then Instagram. It's normally post all the same stuff. Yeah. Just because you know you got different audiences on each. Yeah. So. No, just. If I get on TikTok to post a video, next thing you know, I'm scrolling. I'm like, wait, I'm posting yeah, a video right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's it's addicting, I've heard. So. <laughs> I've heard. It's, yeah. Well, like, yeah, good thing to get on that. But, yeah. but you're big on Twitter? Yeah, um, I like Twitter. It's tougher, it, at least for me. It was tougher to get a following on there. Like, mm -hmm. you have to be really active. And like I said, when I'm at school, I'm not on my phone. When I'm at practice, like, it's we don't go on our phone. That's sure. kind of like an unwritten rule that, like, if you're on your phone to practice, dude, like, you know, you're kind of like looked at like come yeah, on yeah. come on and uh so when we're at practice you put it away and so i guess really though it's tough to get that following because on twitter you got to stay active yeah and i'm just not that active like maybe once or twice a day yeah so. twitter i i can't get i, yeah, I don't no, post it's anything. tough yeah you can you can follow us clash of combat on twitter yeah crosby will <laughs> yeah. saying the hot takes yeah no, what I, were some things you said uh after starachi lost to uh daringer since he was saying uh like there's levels to this. I said, yeah. Daringer just told him, I am the level. And yes. then yeah. but I saw, I, I copied somebody else because mm -hmm. I saw that comment somewhere else. But There's some interesting stuff on Twitter for sure. That's, oh my. that's by far the wildest <laughs> platform. Well, yeah. That, that I'm on at least. <laughs> Any, anyone can say anything. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, and then the fights on there are nuts too. Like that people just go back and forth all day. Would you become like a smack talker in the future? Or are you now? No. no. I, I don't only stay off that. I know some guys that I've wrestled in the past. I won't say any names, but they've definitely tried to get me onto yeah. that or like, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe like tried to lure me into that yeah. into talking back to them or, or getting on there. But I feel like uh, the more I can stay in the, in the good light, yeah. you know, the better. I don't want people to like put me in a bad image or yeah. something. And I feel like it definitely, there's a time and place for it, but you know, if that's what you're known for, I think that that's. Yeah. I feel like it's hard to fake smack talk. Like, yeah. you either have it yeah. or you don't. Right. Right. Like, right. Yeah, you're going to sound like <laughs> this just, guy doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, either. Cejudo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, the king, literally, he says he's the king of cringe because his trash talk is just horrible. Yeah. He's got some cool stuff. Um, 
cool catchphrases and stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> as far as when it was like face to face, Sterling. Got yeah, good, I feel he's bringing the pillows yeah. to the press conference. Yeah, that was that was questionable. I don't know. <laughs> Did you but, see that? Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, he is that the weigh in? Yeah, the weigh in. It was a literally a pillow with like Elgin st- yeah. uh, face on okay. it. <laughs> yeah. And he's O'Malley's like face, and, yeah, kicks him into the crowd. Yeah. See, that'd be cool. If, okay, in like wrestling, think about the finals, like the finals press conference with weigh-ins, and like yeah. people could have. Well, theatrics. that's one thing I'd like to see a little more is the weigh-ins at NCAs, because I'm mm. sure. I mean, some guys got to be close. Three days, I think. Yeah. Three day weigh-in. I mean, that's no joke. Um, wrestling, like the open and stuff, like two day scratch is hard. Mm. Let alone three days. I know you get a pound or whatever, but still, that's. It's definitely tough, and I'm sure there's, like, some close calls or, or whatever. I'm sure maybe there's some talking. I'm sure it would be cool to see. It's just they don't put anything out on that. Yeah. And one thing I like to see, too, at NCA is there's no real, like, behind the scenes. Yeah, I like, agree. I mean, even in the back hall or whatever, it would just be cool to see more of that. And uh, Well, we had an idea for <laughs> next NCA. <laughs> yes. We set up podcasts, like, just like this, right in the back, like, where all the wrestlers come out after their matches. Yeah. And as they're coming out, they come sit just down. Grab them. Yeah. They sit down for five Why minutes. Not? They go. Next guy comes in. We're just live. We're just yeah. live. If you could pull that off, that'd be huge. That'd be so <sighs> cool, dude. That'd be huge. Like, imagine. I'd be that. watching NCAs. Dude. And imagine. then I'd be like, dude, the content you could get. But yeah. we'd be there, and we couldn't be watching the wrestling, though. Yeah. That's uh, the only bad. Unless we, we could have we a little monitor. A TV somewhere. Okay. A TV somewhere. Yeah. I'm sure they got it on. Yeah. yeah. No, but that was an idea I think could be super cool. Yeah. One thing I think being there is crazy. I, have you ever been there? Yeah, twice. Dude, I, I went never. this year in uh, Tulsa, and then I was in the one in Pittsburgh. Okay. All sessions? All sessions. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it, it was insane. It was, I mean, I'm, if I can, I would like to go every year mm. until I'm there. Like, it was, it was awesome. Like, being there is crazy. Just different. Yeah. Just different. That, that's the biggest thing. Like if someone's like, say you're, you know, youth to high school or high school to college, go to that top tournament, <sighs> go to that national see tournament, go like. to that state tournament and see the atmosphere. I remember walking yeah. into the, my first, you know, high school, you know, state, um, you know, event. And I'm just like looking at all the people, like just rows on rows. Yeah. There's like three, you know, three mats in the middle. I'm like, yeah. holy cow. Well, that, that brings a point to like competing when you're younger. Like I wrestled at some like. I mean, obviously the crowd wasn't full, but like some bigger venues Mm -hmm. as I was growing up, like the Grand River Rumbles and like stuff like that. It wasn't that big of a deal to us now, but it was back then. Mm -hmm. And like just being able to, I don't know, wrestle in front of that crowd and handle that, I guess, is something that could probably give you the advantage, you know, when you're wrestling at D1, D2 Nationals, like when there is a big crowd. That's what uh, Bo Nickel was saying about his UFC fights. Yep. Like he had been there. Yeah. He's had, what, over a thousand wrestling matches? Yeah. Over probably a hundred in front of a crowd, just as, or maybe not just as big, but same type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, NCAAs is that big. Yeah. So that's a good point. Do you ever feel extra pressure because of whether it be like your name, your following, your sign with Rudis? Do you ever feel that extra pressure? Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I could sit here and say I don't, but absolutely I do. And I think that uh, I use it, though. I think that I use it, and the more I can use it to my advantage, the better. You know, obviously the pressure's there, and, like, you lose, like, flow or or whoever's there covering it. It's probably going to blow it up. But, again, then I just think about training, and I'm like, this guy doesn't do what I do, Mm. or or I just use it. You know, pressure makes diamonds, and I think that when you can use your pressure, you can ultimately have a better performance. Yeah. And, uh yeah, but it, I mean, people who say they don't have pressure, don't feel nerves, they're lying. Yeah, you know, it's it's there every single match, no matter if it's just a random tournament or if it is like Super Thirty Two, like it's there. Mm. And I think that you just have to use it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. What do you want the Bo Bassett legacy to be? <sighs> Man, a lot of things, but I think that you know, I think something that I'm just trying to change the sport. You know, I, no one's ever really done what I'm doing as far as like online and like putting my stuff out there and and being I guess verbal about what I'm doing and and I'm just trying to inspire the next generation and and inspire people who watch my videos maybe even like 10 20 30 years down the road you know and I think the legacy that I'm going to leave is just someone who's tough someone who you know high pace scores a lot of points and uh really just set the bar high and and uh, made history I guess that's, that's where I'm sweet at. How are you keeping the girls off you at school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, um, when it's time to wrestle, it's time to wrestle. Okay. Yeah, I guess there's time for that. But, yeah, I try to dial it in. All right. Dial it in. I, oh, I, I, we were talking about on the way over here. I wanted to, like, think of how – I guess, like, you just wouldn't date until, like, 
Well, I, I have a girlfriend. Oh, you do have a girlfriend? Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, she lives far away, so I don't see her that much. Goes to a different she, school. Yeah, it goes to a different school. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, a couple of hours, actually. So, it's wow. like long distance. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess, obviously, it sucks in one way, but, like, mm. it kind of helps in another, I'm sure, sure, for, like, the guys who, like, literally, like, almost live. I mean, if the same district as their girlfriend, I'm sure that's tough. You know, sometimes it's probably distracting and stuff, but sure. I think for me, it's kind of like, it stinks, but it's kind of a blessing too, because I mean, I just focus all yeah. in, you know? That's interesting. And, uh, how, do you, yeah. how do you meet a girl that far away when you're in high school? It's through wrestling. Oh, okay. Yeah, Is she a wrestler? Through, through wrestling, our brother wrestled. Oh, okay. And I just got linked up like that pretty much online, and then I obviously see her wrestling or whatever mm. uh, when, when it all happened, and uh, and so yeah, so. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but like I said, I try to keep it like, when it's wrestling, yeah dialed in and then there's time for that like i said but you know i think it's definitely probably a little bit of a blessing that it's not a distraction yeah hmm? how do you say the word singlet singlet <laughs> singlet singlet you say singlet singlet okay because i he has a little accent with the tournament we or we say like tournament he says tournament tournament Tur- oh tournament. you didn't notice that <laughs> no i didn't notice tournament. that yeah tournament. i mean <laughs> tournament. either or is fine yeah but yeah, because we have a guy. Casey Gish says, "Oh, he he does say single let. That's, single let. That's pretty weird. Yeah, that, is, that weird. is pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, there's some weird ones um, that that I've heard. But uh, what what do you think about the state and states? It's state, state, states. The state tournament. Yes. Okay. You, <laughs> wait, you said states. Yeah. It's a state tournament. The state, state. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. We yes. wrestled at state. Wait, but do you guys have uh, districts? Yeah, districts, regional states. Did Wait, they? didn't you say states? Well, states. Oh! <laughs> oh! We just got <laughs> well, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, because so it's like uh, in PA they call it states for most people. Most people. Okay. Yeah. But you're I the mean, smart. I mean, it's like the state tournament. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. You know. I get it. But it's like districts. There's like eleven or something, and then we only have two divisions. So double A, oh. triple A. Okay. Oh so wait, like, I thought you guys had like five. No, no, we're uh, one of the few states. It's like only broken up once, oh, and nice. um, yeah. So it's it's pretty tough, but I mean, growing up, honestly, elementary and junior high was one division. So it's like yeah. it's harder to win then, because like That's a good point. once you're out of junior high, it's like half the guys are mm-hmm. gone, and um, yeah, I mean, definitely waters it down a little bit. But yeah, we're only two divisions, and I know some states like Georgia or something's like six. <laughs> it's like yes. crazy. But one thing, no way that, there's that much wrestlers in Georgia. I know. And then one thing, California, I think is one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the biggest state. I mean, one of the biggest states, if not the biggest, so, yeah. Are you pro headgear, or? Well, my ears are rough right now. Are they? they are rough. They're bad. They blew up. I was wrestling Levi Haynes. Should have been wearing my headgear. Back of my mind the whole time, I'm like, I should be wearing my headgear. Mm-hmm. Didn't wear my headgear, and consequences uh. were paid for that. You know him. He's a hard hand fighter, and this year really blew up. It Like, I can't wear your ear, earbuds anymore okay. on this one yet. Um, and then this year is just the top, but right now, pro headgear because i have to yeah i see but uh no i don't like headgear at all i don't wear it mm. um in any tournament i can't wear it i'm not gonna wear it yeah. uh, but i know that high school they like require it sure. for all the stuff and so it's definitely yeah. definitely changed dude talking about levi i can i wish i could see the room next year when him and mess and brink oh yeah to wrestle yeah Did, have, have you wrestled seen their match at the u20s trials. last year yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, mess and brink doubles him into the table mm-hmm. oh yeah the whole everything gets There's shut no off. Way they're, dude. they're gonna be like friends, right? If they're I mean, like going for the same weight, I don't think. I, I, think I don't, I don't think they're one sixty-five. Oh, one okay. or the other. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know. Yeah, one or the other. I mean, I'm, I've heard a couple of things, but one or the other, and mm-hmm. vice versa. I mean, one's gonna have to wrestle Facundo. Yep. That's like, true. But I think I feel like they both beat Facundo. Facundo's still in there grinding, and I know that that's three like dudes who could all American at either way. Yeah. You know, at any time and. Facundo beat like Cam and Mean. I'm pretty sure he beat someone else who all American. Um, Facundo last year. did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Dude, that's a that room is just and, uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Facundo, uh, Facundo had a rough. I mean, he had a tough draw at nationals, I guess. Getting Ramirez sure. first round of cons is yeah. is definitely a tough draw. But and then you have Cam and Mean who like had a great NCAA tournament. It's nuts how that all works out. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's a tough schedule wrestling Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, you're sure to wrestle <laughs> top five in the country at some point and and the doles and then the big tens and then most of them wrestle again at nationals mm-hmm. your this wrestling is iq is. is pretty high for how much people you know and like yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm like dude what <laughs> yeah yeah uh like i said though i know a lot of these guys yeah. and that makes sense you I, uh, follow them and like, yeah. make the connections too. yeah yeah i mean penn state guys um, i know them. 
obviously they would probably know me all by name and everything like where i'm from and all that yeah. and so they're all really cool and uh that's one thing i've been fortunate like i haven't really met anyone that's been like mean or like sure. just like blows you off like all the dudes that i know they like they take the time with you they're not just gonna push you away mm. you know they're like really that's cool, sweet yeah so. as a person like who's your favorite at penn, oh, at penn state man, <laughs> oh. snyder. really snyder is probably the coolest guy just because i mean too i know him from team rudis right and seeing him out at the uh training center is just i mean he's he's a great person him jb is awesome but i mean it's tough because there's so many good people in that room mm -hmm. that it's like if i don't if I name people, then I'm gonna forget, and yeah. and I know that like I'm telling you, everyone in there is great. Yeah, there's no one in there that's like a clown or anything. Like everyone sure. is straight edge, and they're all awesome. Yeah. Why do you so. think it is that uh, it's like a mystery school? Like nobody knows like all the stuff What's that's going, going on. on. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Oh, they're secretive for sure. They uh, they do things right, and um, you know, I feel like it's such a good room. And they just make each other so much better. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, their style is definitely different. It uh, it threw it threw me off the first time I was in there and stuff. And um, they're definitely different. And obviously, it pays off though. Yeah. yeah but they're definitely Literally. secretive, and they they keep their ideas to themselves. Yeah. And, you know, you don't go around telling what you learn in there. No, that's absolutely right. Because you know, yeah. when we were there, we're trying to get you know people on the podcast. And it's like no one really wants to. No one wants yeah. to talk. Yeah, they, they don't want to answer those hard yes, questions. They, they yeah. don't want to, like, say more than they need to. Right. And right. I think they were told that, so. Yeah, I mean, they want to keep that. They don't want to be the guy that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now that, think much. about it, now that Bo's out of there, he's, like, social yeah. media personality all of a yeah. sudden. His, his, uh, his one video on Technique Tuesdays, those are, those are funny stuff. His, he just does random stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has, like, the little mini dummy, yes. and, like, throw it yeah. around and stuff, and uh, he's always super, super just funny and, yeah. and outgoing. Dude, his most recent one. Yeah. Did you see I, it with the like double the, overs? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That, was, that, was, that was, like, was my favorite video was like, he's posted. Yeah, that Clickbait was or something. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was definitely funny. That was sure. good. Yeah. He has some good ideas. Is it time? Yeah. So we saw you have a ton of hardware up there. Yeah. There's three things you're missing. Mm -hmm. All right. An Olympic gold medal. Right. An NCAA title. Uh-huh. And a clash of combat plaque yes yo <laughs> let's, yeah let's go dang this is sick yeah yeah i have to add this up there for sure yeah i uh this is awesome this is heavy too yeah wow. so our, our producer shoe here he he yeah. hand cuts them we yeah got, like no, a metal cutting and awesome that's good stuff man i appreciate that yeah shout out yeah. shoe shop shout yeah. out shoe so now shop. all we need is that ncaa title in the olympic yes, yes, sir. next up yeah, yeah. well, well thank you so much yeah. this was awesome thank yeah, you for thank you. i appreciate you guys making the drive in and just the opportunity yeah sure of course yeah it was awesome yeah sweet Ooh. thank you yeah it was great this is awesome dude yeah that was good. thank you